Now we know that GE Aviation has a tremendous history with its early fighter engines. That's really what put us on the map, J-47 and J-79 in particular. But you must remember that GE has fighter engines now that are very viable and extremely innovative that go from the 1980s all the way to the present and into the future. I'll start first with an engine called the F-404, an engine designed in Lynn that has a lineage all the way back to the late 1960s when the Lynn plant and the designers there were working very closely with Northrop on a replacement for the F-5. GE had developed an engine they called the J-101 in the 1960s, and this engine they actually called the leaky turbofan because the focus of that engine was really more cost than technology. Gerhard Newman, leading the business at that time, said, come up with a very affordable, competitive turbofan engine in this great little small thrust class. Again, a successor for the F-5. Well, time marches on, and Northrop is working then with McDonnell Douglas on a competition with the United States for what they call the lightweight aircraft fighter jet. And this is in the early 1970s. In that competition, the Northrop-led team with the GE engine does not win. The winner is selected by Pratt & Whitney with John Dynamics with the F-16. However, the Navy took a liking to this concept of this aircraft that McDonnell Douglas and Northrop were working on and the engine, which then becomes the F-404. And so we are selected to become the next generation attack aircraft, the F-18. And so in 1978, this aircraft then goes into full development and deployment in the late 70s and early 1980s. The F-404 is one of the truly ubiquitous fighter jet engines in the world. And it, I love the fact that like so many of our engines, it has this long history of tenacity, starting in that late 1960s period, trying to sell a concept with Northrop around the world with something called the J-101, we continue to refine the engine, improve the engine, work on the cost of the engine. Gerhard Newman's goal was that two F-404 engines could, should cost the same price as one Pratt F-100 engine on the F-16. So they were cost, maintainability, stayed with the program for a long period of time, and the F-404 becomes a mainstay with the F-18, not just with the U.S. Navy, but all over the world with other operators of that airplane. Then in 1992, this is when McDonnell Douglas then introduces the growth version called the Super Hornet, the F-18E-F. This is a larger F-18, and we designed for that program the F-414, which is based on the F-404. It has technologies from other fighter programs we have, and also from our commercial world. So the F-414 then becomes the ubiquitous engine across the Navy inventory, still very much in production today. So we have been for decades now powering the F-18s through the operations of our Lynn plant through the F-404 and then the F-414, two very innovative, very successful, very reliable fighter engines. Perhaps you've heard the expression, the great engine war, and there was a great engine war. It occurs in the early 1980s when the U.S. Air Force had become dissatisfied with Pratt & Whitney as a sole provider of engines for its F-16, F-15 fleet. And they felt that by introducing a competition to the picture, a competing engine with that, they could reduce costs and get better responsiveness from contractors. And that's exactly what happened. GE began working by taking an, its F-101 engine for the B-1 bomber and began developing that into a fighter that would later be known as the F-110. The F-110 then would receive contracts from the U.S. Air Force to make it a fully developed engine, and by 1984, competes head-on with the Pratt engine, the F-100, for what they would call the first round of the Great Engine War in 1984 for F-15s and F-16s. And in an astounding move, GE is selected for two-thirds of the buys for F-16s that year. Now, mind you, Pratt had been the sole source supplier of engines for the F-16 for a decade before this occurs. Now, because production of F-15s were going down, the U.S. Air Force opted to stay with Pratt on the F-15. But going forward for the next 10 years, 
the majority of F-16s, a single engine aircraft, would be powered by our F-110-100 and then the F-110-129 aircraft, a higher thrust engine. And today, the vast majority of all frontline F-16 fighters are powered by our F-110 engine. An extraordinary success story. You know, you think about the core of the F-101 engine that's on the B-1 bomber. That core was used for the CFM-56 to put us in the commercial world and narrow body. It was used to produce the F-110 fighter jet engine, which is on the F-16. And by the way, also now on the F-15, we began winning international competitions as well with that program. It also was used, a derivative of the F-101, then was used to power the B-2 bomber with its F-118 engine and also the U-2 spy plane. So a whole family of engines and aircraft evolved out of the single core, the F-101, for the B-1 bomber. This is one of the great successes that GE has had, is by taking its cores that we've seen and grow into families. The F-101 has been a great success story through the F-110, and this is a program that continues to have life in international competitions. We have several right now for F-110 engines, for F-16s, and it's just another example of GE sticking with its knitting, trying to do the best for the customers, trying to create something that's durable and reliable, affordable, really focus on the needs of the customers to pre present to them something that's a real winner. F-110 is one of the great stories at GE of coming back into an industry. Could you think about it? Back in 1970, GE was shut out of the competition to power F-16s and F-15s. And now here we are all these decades later, we power the majority of frontline fighters for F-16s, and now we're also powering F-15s. A tremendous success story for our military team.